All right, Hard Rocker fans, how are we today? Great. All right. Great afternoon. Amazing weather in November for the end of November, so we're not going to complain one bit today. So just a couple things. A big thank you to Arrowhead Country Club for being home of Hard Rocker Golf and being a corporate sponsor of ours. Uh, this is a great partnership for us. Uh, just a couple of announcements on my end. Uh, Jeep Raffle, we're halfway done with the tickets. Where's Cliff? Still waiting for you to get your tickets, right? The lucky one's still in there, I think. So we're halfway through that, so we will announce the winner at the halftime of the Black Hill State game, the end of February here. So that's coming up. Um, women's basketball is at home this Thursday at 5.30. They play Wayne State College. That's our home event that's uh, coming up next. Um, and then, of course, our uh, RMAC home opener is next Tuesday up at Black Hills at 5.30 and 7.30. So if you're looking for something to do before Thanksgiving, come on up and support the Hard Rockers as they take on Black Hills State uh, up in Spearfish. So we will be off next week. There is no coaches' luncheon, so don't show up anywhere. And then the following week will be December 3rd already, and we will be back in the Christensen Hall of Fame at 12 p.m. So with that being said, I'll let everybody else get up here to talk about their sports and hear from some athletes. So we will start with uh, Coach Jerry Jacobson for women's basketball. Hi guys, um, pardon my snuffling. I just ate something way too spicy right before I walked up here. <laughs> my nose is running. Um, first, I just want to say great wins for men's basketball and football this last weekend. Um, I know the NSIC is a tough conference in terms of basketball, and so to get one of those wins is awesome. And then football, no better way to end a season than with a win on the road. Um, volleyball, I'm going to be really sad that I don't get to watch your guys' games anymore. Um, but that being said, we're playing every week now too. So I'm um, really excited about our uh, home game this Thursday against Wayne State. They're a talented team. Um, a little different than back when I played against them. They just ran zone all the time, but now they're a man, man to man. Uh, team and I think it'll be hopefully a lot of points will be scored um, They like to play fast and so do we uh, this last weekend. We went up to Billings um, Lost a tough one. We lost by one point uh, We were down by 11 at one point um, and we battled back um, a big part of that is Anna Haugen uh, She kind of just put the team on her back in that the beginning of the third quarter and throughout the third quarter of we're not losing this game um, so really proud of her effort. She had a double-double. Uh, I hope she's our double-double machine the whole year. Excuse me, the whole year. Kind of challenged her with that. Um, one of our very first games, I was like, I expect at least 10 rebounds a game. <laughs> and then just continuing to tell her teammates, hey, we've got to get the ball in, Diana. Good things happen when we get it into the post. So um, excited that you guys get to hear from her today uh, before she has to head to class. Um, but other than that, you know, I was really proud of our effort against Billings to fight back. Tough first half, we had so many open looks and we just missed them, whether it was layups, you know, 10 footers, three pointers. Um, Sammy didn't have the greatest shooting day and that, that hurts us a little bit when one of our best shooters has, has trouble finding the bottom of the net, but that happens. Um, some days you have games like that, some days all of them go in. So we're looking forward to bouncing back again um, Thursday against Wayne. Um, other than that, I'm going to have Anna talk a little bit. Anna is one of our senior uh, leaders this year. She's done a phenomenal job of making sure all the newbies are feeling part of the team. Uh, she's also brilliant. Uh, she is a, I'll let her tell you what major she is, but she went to a trip in Philadelphia right when season started to present a project that she worked on this past summer. Uh, I used to be a biology chemistry major minor but I've since um, turned my brain into a basketball brain, so I'll let her talk more about that too because I can't say some of those words. Um, but very proud of Anna, really excited for her senior year and just what she brings to our team and our program. So come on up, Anna. Um, yeah, so as coach said, my name is Anna Haugen. I'm a senior from Fort Collins, Colorado and I'll be graduating this December with my degree in Applied Biological Sciences and a minor in Chemistry. And then next semester I'll be starting my master's degree in either Biomedical Engineering or Nano Engineering. So that's pretty exciting. Um, as far as Philadelphia goes, I had the amazing opportunity this last summer 
to work with Dr. Wood in the nanoscience department on campus, and I worked on the quantification of actin motion and chondrocytes using lattice light sheet microscopy. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a big mouthful. Um, but basically, I looked at the cartilage cells in your knees, your ankles, your hips, things like that, and how they move when they're exposed to different kinds of drugs. Um, and the end goal of that project is really to further understand osteoarthritis and how we might begin to cure that because it affects millions of Americans every year and it's a big um, money industry. So yeah, I was able to go to Philadelphia to present my findings for that research in October. Um, it was absolutely incredible. It's a crazy experience. It is the uh, National Biomedical Engineering Society. They have an annual meeting every year, so there was like 50,000 people there. It's really crazy. I'd never been to Philadelphia before and I went by myself. Um, <laughs> so that was kind of scary, but uh, definitely an experience that I will never forget. Um, as far as teasing goes, Coach talked about our tough loss this weekend. Uh, that one really stung, you know, those last second losses by one point where you go back and think about everything you could have changed. But I think ultimately it's a really big learning experience for us that we'll be glad to have um, later in the season when we get in conference and get those tougher games and really have to execute and make every play count. So, yeah. Does anyone have any questions for me? Oh, after I graduate. Um, I'm not exactly sure yet if I do biomedical engineering, I'd like to work with prosthetics and hopefully um, designing those or I'm still considering um, going to school to be a clinician to fit people with prosthetics. And another option that I've been considering is physical therapy school and specifically focusing on um, the neurological side of it. So working with people who um, are newly amputees, um, getting them back to walking, as well as people who have issues with recovering from strokes, um, different physiological issues with cancer, things like that is what I'm mostly interested in, but to be determined still. So, yeah, Joel, did you have a question? <laughs> Uh, excuse me. Uh, yeah, just what was your findings on your research in your paper? Um, so basically, they're still kind of inconclusive because um, we're trying to quantify, basically get numbers out of this motion that we're seeing with this specific type of microscope. And we're not sure what the best way to do that is because we have three-dimensional data and we're using two-dimensional methods for that. Um, but we found a software that works kind of well, but it has some limitations as well. So that was kind of, it was more of an update in terms of findings instead of um, conclusions, I guess, you can say. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I've uh, been here eight seasons. I think you're the best offensive rebounder mm -hmm. that I've seen in the entire time here. Um, what's, your, what's your mindset on I mean, your attacking boards? Like, uh, where does it all come from? Where does that drive to get the ball come from? Um, I don't know, I mean, that's a good question, but I think through my years of playing basketball, rebounding has always been something that I can control, and it's an effort thing for me, and when shots aren't dropping, calls aren't going your way, like, that's something you can rely on, and a lot of times you can catch people off guard with it, too, and it's a huge momentum thing, also, offensive rebounding, so it's a really big thing for me to make sure I'm locked in in the game and that I keep my effort always at the highest I can, you know, and um, making sure I'm the aggressor no matter what, I guess. Any other questions for me or him? Thank you guys. Good afternoon. Uh, first of all, I'll just apologize. I totally dropped the ball and forgot to ask one of my guys to come with me today. So, but I had two last week thanks to Dr. West, so I'm still the average is still good. That's why I did one tonight. So, I'll make sure we get those there. We get nice reminders from Maria too. So I apologize, Maria. I didn't fall through on your email. She's not paying attention to me. <laughs> so. Uh, obviously, we had a pretty good weekend this last weekend. Uh, went up to the East-West shootout up at Spearfish, and it was uh, it was two good, very good teams. We knew that going in that we were going to play. Northern State actually had come in uh, 
a throw and two record, and they're the team that walked away with a two and zero record out of the shootout. So it kind of tells you, you know, the competition that we're playing uh, when we go do those conference challenges, and also the fact that uh, you know, anytime at any type of place, you know, people, you know, they, it, the game has to be played. So when we played them on Friday night, um, I think the biggest thing that we got from that game is how important our ball movement is. And uh, we really did a good job of attacking the lane. <clears throat> we ended up being 15 for 40, though, from the from the paint, which is obviously not a very good percentage um, with getting that close to the basket. But a lot of those shots were contested shots, and we didn't make the extra passes. We actually ended the game with only six assists. And the week before, when we set the three-point record, we had 21 assists. So it was a very easy stat for us to look at and point to. And so that was a big emphasis for us going in the next day against Augustana. Uh, Augustana is a very good offensive team, was averaging about 83 points a game. And so we knew that we had a lot of work cut out for us to try to tame them, so to speak. And uh, we did slow down their transition. They didn't get a lot of transition baskets on us. We were pretty happy about that. Um, and then we, on the offensive side, we were very patient and we did make a lot of those passes. We ended up with 18 assists during that game. So that was a big part of, of our success. Um, obviously we shot it very well, but when we're able to move the ball and get guys shots, you know, from making those extra passes, um, we've got the guys that can shoot it. We just got to make sure we're shooting the right shots. And then so our shooting percentage reflected that. And that was a very positive thing for us. Um, they obviously had a really good player. Uh, we don't like to give up 20 points to any individual, and but he he really we made him earn it. But he had a heck of a game and kept him in it. And I was really happy with our guys. The fact that you know we had leads on them on multiple occasions and they came back, took the lead, and our guys responded. And so that's a that's a really good sign for us um, because of the fact of where we were last year at this time, uh, being able you know losing leads late and so forth. So be able to kind of claim those leads back and finish it off was a really good feeling for us and I think it's doing a lot for our confidence as we head into the conference season here shortly. So as we look forward here on Friday, um, we'll take off Thursday with our guys and head down to uh, Kearney, Nebraska and play the University of Nebraska Kearney who is, uh, you know, kind of a team that's just, uh, they've got a lot of new parts. Uh, it looks like they're starting to mesh they're starting to play pretty pretty well. They started out the season 0-2 also in their conference challenge and then went and played some of our uh, RMAC opponents on the road uh, in UCCS and Colorado Mines. And the first night against UCCS, uh, it was a heck of a game and just came up short. And then they went the next night and upset Colorado Mines at Mines. And you know how hard that is to beat them at their place. And so for them to go in there and do that, I think is, is good for us because it gets our guys attention right away that okay there's not a record here to look at uh, these guys can definitely play and they know that they've won a, a good game and a tough place to go to uh, but I think you can see the progression one of their big guys who uh, coach Trample actually coached in high school uh, is, their, is their center and he that, that's a big reason why they've gotten off to a slow start I believe he, he had broken his nose I believe it was uh, at a scrimmage earlier in the year and so he was only playing about nine minutes a game to start with in the first weekend and the last game against Colorado Mines, he played 35 minutes and had 21 points and nine boards. So he's a big part of what they do. And uh, for, for us, you know, we have, we're pretty proud of our two bigs inside. So I think it's gonna be a really good matchup for us with him. Uh, they also have kind of an undersized uh, forward, power forward, uh, that's just really crafty around the basket and uh, really knows, has good footwork and really knows how to get a shot off uh, for, for being as undersized as he is. And does a good job of drawing people away from the basket and being able to use his quickness to get by him. Uh, but again, I like our our, our uh, matchups with him as well. I think we have two guys that can really do a good job of guarding him and being able to uh, uh, keep him hopefully in, in contact because he is leading them in scoring right now. So with those two guys, um, obviously our guards have, have great matchups as well. Uh, I think it's just going to be a fantastic game for us again. Uh, another team that is very similar to a lot of teams. They're an old RMAC foe anyway. Uh, not for us, but uh, before we came in the league, they used to be in the RMAC. And so it's, it's kind of a neat uh, series for us to start up and uh, look forward to playing them on Friday. Um, with that said, any questions from anybody? Any comment about next Tuesday? Well, yeah, you know, Black Hills says uh, they lost a lot of parts in their in their backcourt. Uh, they still have their starting point guard, who is 
to me is, is really the guy who makes him go. Uh, he's you know he's like 25 years old first of all, so he's just he's just a guy that just has a lot of poise out there. He doesn't get rattled. Um, and then he's 6'4", and I don't know what he is. He, he looks like, I mean, I think Coach Tinker would take him as a linebacker. He's a really big, strong guy. And he slow plays the ball screen so well. Um, you know, I think always the conventional wisdom of bat basketball is to make him shoot the perimeter shot, but boy, he has nights where he gets on a pretty good streak too, so he could hit you with that. You just kind of hope it's not his night from the perimeter and try to keep from getting in the lane. And whenever you bring help, because of the fact he's so strong, he protects the ball so well, and he's so confident with it that he has great vision at 6'4", and he finds open guys very well. So he really poses a big mismatch for us because our guards aren't that big. Um, we're quicker than him, but it's just, you know, he just holds us off so well. And so that's going to be a challenge is to, is to get him uh, under control. Uh, they have added a good shooting guard who I honestly really like. Uh, I think that he is, I don't want to say that he's better than what they had last year, but I like his poise and his demeanor better. He really plays under control, and uh, he doesn't play like a first semester guy for him. He, he, he plays like he's been in their system already for a year or plus. And then, uh, of course, they've got their, their, their uh, power forward back in Disneysa, and then their big post inside is also back. So, you know, they're, they're going to be a good team in the RMAC. I know a lot of people thought they would have a drop-off, but they have enough parts coming back, and, uh, and like I said, the guard that they added, and they have a freshman that's playing really well for them also. That they're going to be a force in the RMAC again, and I'm expecting a really good game. I, I like the way we're, I like where we're at. I like the way we're playing. Um, I like the mindset of our guys. Uh, they're hungry. They want to really make a turn. Our big thing we've been talking about is consistency. You know, last year we had some big wins, and we had some not so great losses. And uh, this year we're really looking trying to level that out. And uh, that's a big challenge. That's what everybody's trying to do. And uh, it's a it's a big challenge as a coach to make sure that your guys stay on that ice, even keel, you know, and we want to celebrate the wins, but not too much, and we want to not let the, not get so low where we're getting ourselves in a, into a rut either. So uh, I, I, like, I like what we're doing. Despite what would happen here come Friday against Kearney, I know we're going to be ready to play. It's a big game. It's unfortunate it's on that Tuesday before Thanksgiving because I don't know how many students are going to be there. So we're going to miss out on that kind of atmosphere. So. But I think last year we played them up there right before spring break, and it was kind of the same deal. And I really like the turnout that we had there. So I'm literally looking forward to maybe outnumbering them uh, at, at their own gym. And we seem to play really well there. Uh, we've, uh, in my 16 years here now, we've gone up there and had just as much success, if not more success there, as we have at our own gym against them for whatever reason. I don't know if there's just that much pressure for teams to play on their home court or what it is, but. And, you know, you could use this past week as an example. I thought we played very well. I thought we shot overall really well other than just trying to force some things. But when we had open shots, we were knocking down open shots. So, uh, yeah, I just uh, look forward to it. I think it's going to be a great game, but we're going to try to take care of these lopers first. Hey, Eric. Yes. With all the, it seems like we have a lot of players back who've scored a lot and are good players. Like, how do you, um, how, are you how do you call plays to, Ball. I mean, what, what's your, what's your guys' mindset with that right now? Is it try to just let the offense run, or are you trying to get to certain people all the time? How does that work? Yeah, I think it's a combination of both for us. Um, you know, we really stress movement of the basketball, and when you play a style like that, that we play, um, sharing the basketball and stuff, obviously we have some guys that are really, really good players, um, but also, you know, we have some very capable parts around them, and so that's a really nice problem to have. And so when we are able to do those kind of things, we can run our continuity offenses where the ball moves through multiple hands. And when guys have the looks that we're looking for, can knock them down. You know, we have, I think right now we have five guys shooting over 40% from three right now, which is, is a great percentage. And to have that many guys be able to do that is, who do you key on? You know, I mean, obviously I know in scouting reports are gonna be talking about Mitch Sucker. Um, they're gonna be talking about, you know, Alec and his penetration. But, you know, there's a guy named Troy Brady that'll just flat out throw, you know, darts at you every single time. And Jack Fiddler coming off the bench, you know, scores 25 off the bench. And so those are really great parts for us. That's why, you know, and when we talk about calling plays, then, yeah, you know, there's probably some mismatches that we look for and you know, things like that. And then we just, guys that we just, you know, you know, Mitch has got a big one that we say, okay, yeah, we just got to get him a touch and let him do his thing. 
Um, and those are usually more situational, you know, late game situations and things like that. But um, for the most part, you know, ideally, I love just letting them run our early offense, which is our secondary break, or our ball screen motion, uh, and get into that and just let it hit multiple hands because I have a confidence in all of them out there to be able to put the ball in the hole. Yes, Marie. I just have one comment. I watched both games um, online, and I would like to request that Alec Burton goggles <laughs> well, it's funny you said that because uh, he showed up uh, on the vans and, or off the vans when we were dressing and getting ready, and I saw he had the goggles on on Saturday, and I said, "Oh, I'll dusted off the goggles for this one, huh?" And he just smiled and went and shot around and stuff. And then, you know, in the first half, you know, he had those three threes in the first half, and after I think the third one, during it, someone was shooting a free throw, he walked over me. He goes, "Hey, coach." Yeah, I'm not going to wear my contacts anymore. <laughs> so we had a nice little laugh about that in a, in a tense moment of the game. So it kind of shows you where he's at. You know, he's very comfortable in the, in the heat of the moment, and uh, that's why we love him as a point guard. But, uh, yeah, I, don't, I, don't, I think we're going to only see the goggles for the rest of the year. I mean, I think he's with you on that. Anybody else? Great. Thank you. Have a uh, happy Thanksgiving since we won't be back here. And I uh, look forward to hopefully seeing a lot of friendly faces up there at Black Hill State come next Tuesday. Thank you. Hello. Um, so, yeah, we, um, we finished our season on Friday with a match against Black Hills. Didn't really go our way. They're a frustrating team. I'm not really sure why, but <clears throat> hopefully that's the last time we ever lose to them for the next 25 years. Um, I really want to take this time to reflect on our season because I think it's what is deserved. Uh, you know, going into this season, our captains, our, our coaching staff, our, even our, all of our returners, we sort of made this unanimous decision to ignore anything that's ever happened in the past, the past 20 years, and, and not care about where we were at the highs and lows, but to just kind of wipe this, this slate clean and focus on our goals for the team we have right now. Um, and I think all year we did a fantastic job at keeping those things realistic, staying in the moment, understanding what kind of team we had this year, and that's it. This team, this year, these goals. Um, obviously our one and only goal was really to make the RMAC tournament. It didn't happen. We technically finished 10th in the RMAC. Um, if we had beat Black Hills, we would have been tied for eighth and lost the tiebreaker anyway, but still, I think going from the worst to the tenth, that's not bad. Um, it needs to be better, and our team definitely understands that, but uh, we're really proud of the progress that we've made. We're really proud of the leadership that we've developed. We're really proud of the <clears throat> athletes that we have recruited and continue to recruit, and the family that we continue to build, you know, um, but there's a lot of things to be proud of. We're obviously really happy with the support that we've gotten for our program. Every single home game, we're filling the stands um, over and over again. The same people are supporting us. They're invested in what we're doing. Um, our families are fantastic. They travel everywhere. They support us nonstop. They feed us constantly. They make sure that we're happy and healthy and all these things. So our support system, our family that we've grown is definitely something that we should be really proud of and we are proud of. Um, but moving forward, it's an exciting time for us. We absolutely should be in the RMAC tournament next year. That's always going to be the goal. And it's more than realistic at this point based on the, who we're returning and the, the group of freshmen that we're bringing in right now. So um, all around, I couldn't be happier. I mean, I could be happier, but I couldn't be happier with where we're at. I mean, we finished 11 16 on the season, um, 7 and 11 in conference. So we did a lot of historic stuff, and I'll let my seniors kind of talk about that. But, you know, again, for us to be successful, we've got to focus on the team we have and what those realistic goals look like. And for the team we have, we need to be better, and we got to win more games. Um, but I am, like I said, I'm really happy with this season. I'm so thankful that I got this time with these seniors and this senior class because they're phenomenal women. They taught me a lot. I learned a lot from them. Um, and hopefully we're sending them off into the real world with a lot of knowledge and a, a lot of um, the strength to handle adversity and all those things. Um, 
So I'm going to let Diamond come up and talk, but basically um, last year in the spring, through all of our growth with our six returners, um, we, did, we kind of read this book um, together as a team and we talked about how do we get better, how do we go from bad to good to great. Um, and one of our now juniors, Emma Bogey, came up with this, she found this article written about this team, um, I think they were in Michigan, their Division II team, and they went from the worst team in conference to winning the conference championship in five years. And this coach basically wrote this article about how that happened, and one of the things that this article highlighted was they sat down in their first season after being worst team in the conference and put, said, we're going to keep track this year of everything that we do for the first time ever. Um, and Boki ran with it, she, the team ran with it, we thought it was a great idea. So this whole season, our team has taken the effort, the time to put together a list of everything that our program has done for the first time, which is, again, we're, we're not winning big games, but we're winning the battles and we have to focus on the process, like Coach Glenn always says, and we have to focus on those little things that we're doing well in order for us to keep succeeding. So I'm gonna bring my two seniors up, um, Hannah Stevenson and Karen Hazard. They're kind of going to walk you through those first. Um, 11 and 16 doesn't feel awesome. However, it's the best season we've ever had in Division II. So for that, we need to be proud of. Um, and for the women that we've coached and developed and had the privilege of being with every day, for that, we have to be proud of for sure. But I am so looking forward to our future. Um, and I'm going to let you hear from them for, for the last time ever. <laughs> And you've, and you've met the two of them before, so I'll let them kind of introduce themselves again. But I'm uh, hi, my name's Hannah. I'm a senior civil engineering student. I graduate uh, this May, um, and I am planning to go to grad school next fall. I'm almost done with all my applications, so mm. I'll be finding out about that in the next couple months. I'm Karen Hazard. I'm uh, studying applied biological sciences. And I'm graduating in December, and I'm working on my medical school applications right now. So hopefully I'll be in medical school in the fall. <coughs> oh, yeah. So like Coach said, we um, have like our, our list of firsts for this season. Uh, this was like a really big season, our best season at the school so far. So we'll just share some of those with you. It was our first time beating MSU Billings. First time beating Lake Superior State. First time beating Colorado Mines. First time beating a nationally ranked team. First time beating Metro. Uh, first time having our MBT, and our first MBT of the season was Emma Bokey, a uh, junior on the team. Um, our first time beating Western and Shadron since 2015. Our first time ever beating Adams State. Our first time sweeping Westminster. Uh, our first time staying in an Airbnb as a team, which we did in Utah. <laughs> uh, first time selling game day signs. Uh, our first time playing 11 five-set matches this season. First time having a homecoming queen. <laughs> uh, first time going to Fort Hayes as a team for pancakes. First time having a hard rocker prospect camp. First time having eight freshmen join our team. First time reaching our 39% kill 39 kill percent goal against Metro. Uh, our most uh, Division II wins in program history. Our most RMAC wins in program history. Our first time reading a book as a team. Um, our first time having twins on the team. <laughs> <laughs> and our first time winning uh, the Hard Rocker Family Night competition. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to do all the work. Um, it's a, it was a historic season for us. It's largely in part to due to our seniors, our returners, who never gave up on this team um, and put everything they had into this team. But, you know, best Division II year, best RMAC year. It, it will get better. It has to get better. They know it will. They, um, they will be our biggest supporters from now until forever. Um, but, yeah, incredibly proud of the season. We thank all of you for the support that you've given us. Um, because they feel it, they feel valued, they feel um, important, which is something that I want to make sure that our volleyball student athletes feel every single day being in this institution. So thank you for all that. Um, thank you guys for everything you've done. And um, yeah, any questions for us? Not a question, but a comment. You two are 
awesome young ladies. And uh, looks like you really have a lot of fun when you're out there with the rest of your team. It's been a pleasure watching you, and I can't wait to see what you do with your future. Thank you. Good luck to both of you. Thanks. Yeah. Similar, just that you guys are fun to watch this season, and I look forward to next season. Thank you. Same. Yeah, we're not bringing in 10 freshmen, but we're bringing in five, so. <laughs> Still not easy, but we're looking forward to it. Thank you again. Thank you. How's everybody doing? Great. Awesome. Uh, you know, ask, uh, I was asked mid-season how frustrated I was with how things were going. How frustrated are you, Coach? And, um, specifically with how dreadful we were passing the football I was being asked about. and um, I, I, I told the truth, which was I, when you get to go to practice with our players every day and, and work with them and see that they're making attempts to get better, see that they're applying learning, see that they come and bring energy, see that they're supporting one another, it's really not that frustrating. It's you, You're disappointed for the players because they're not getting the results that they're working for, but you're not frustrated. Uh, that's the joy of coaching is that you get to go work every day. You get, get to control that, if you will. Um, it's a little bit like offensive rebounding. You can just go in there and, and keep fighting away at it until you figure it out. And so I thought Saturday was a culmination of all that hard work that the men put in. We played a really good game on Saturday at Fort Lewis against a team that's really hard to play against a very unorthodox style defense that uh, they, they were only giving up about 20 points a game and a little over 100 rushing yards a game. It's a, it's a tough team to play. And uh, they brought every uh, trick play concept they could to their offense in the first half. We told our players Friday night we would probably be tied or behind at halftime um, and that uh, that we were the better third and fourth quarter team. And so um, then we told them it'd be a defensive struggle, points and yards would be hard to come by. And that's exactly what it was for the first 30 minutes. Uh, our team was, was calm at halftime. I wasn't, um, but the team was. The team showed composure at halftime. Um, we had some messages for what we needed to do to make adjustments down one touchdown. We turned it over twice. We had not forced a turnover yet. Second half, we didn't turn it over. We kept moving the football. We took the ball away at a critical time with Adrian Eastman's interception, and we scored, we, had, we scored the last 20 points of the football game and one on the road, which is hard to do. So that was a very big win. Um, I'm happy for our senior class. We told It was the last game of 2019, but we actually, our message was also that it was the first game of 2020. Um, if you look at this football team, it's, it's unique. There are, uh, we returned 100% of the rushing yards. Uh, we returned 100% of the passing yards, as I told the quarterbacks. 100% of not very many is still not very many. <laughs> but we are we are improving. I think if you watched our quarterbacks, I know everybody watches the quarterbacks hard. Um, we played much, much better as the season came to a close at that position. We, were, we are not at standard yet, but we are uh, inching towards actual competency. Um, and uh, it's very difficult to go from the best passing team in the country to what we were. But... Uh, the progress is there. 92% of our receiving yards return, 83% of our tackles return, um, and I think it's 90% of the turnovers that we caused returns. So, um, and every single kick that we uh, attempted this year, whether it was a punt or a, a field goal or a kickoff, all returns. So there are some really good players and production returning to the program in 2020. In 1977, Arno Guthrie, who doesn't like me very much anymore because uh, I think our running backs that we brought in just keep uh, breaking his records. But I think it's also cool to say that um, a guy who set these records, you know, 42 years ago, uh, 19, th th those records withstood a long period of time. I never saw him play, but he must have been a fan phenomenal football player. He ran for 1,314 yards, so 1,314 yards in 1977. Uh, and in Saturday's game, Ahmad Lewis, our, our, our tailback, uh, broke that single season rushing record by rushing for 1,385 yards in a season. Ahmad uh, completed nine touchdowns for the season. Um, he had eight 100 yard games, and he also led the entire Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference in rushing yards. So, a great individual accomplishment for him, and certainly for the men that worked with him, you know, the offensive line and tight ends and, and receivers who did that. But, um, Jim Arnold Guthrie must have been one heck of a football player because Ahmad Lewis is one heck of a football player too and we're really lucky to have him and get him back for the 2020 season as well. 
Um, and so that's a little bit about where we are and where we are going. It's funny I, when we when I sat here at the start of the year, I said, "Hey, we got this tailback. He's actually pretty good. He might be a pretty good player." And uh, he proved us right. He had a really good year. So I uh, had two big touchdowns on Saturday. So before I bring Cole up, does anybody have any general questions for football or comments for football? Yeah, I thought I, would, I thought I had a pretty good outline today, so I thought I was going to get everything covered. Um, uh, Cosida is the <clears throat> is really the group that runs the all um, academic all American program. Academic all Americans are not just students who do well in the classroom and play sports; uh, those are nominees. Um, the actual academic all Americans are elite students who are also highly accomplished on the field of play. They, they're, they're, they're statistical leaders. They are um, quality character. And, and, uh, and uh, Cole Peterson was recognized as an all-district uh, COSIDA academic All-American, uh, which is a major honor in college football. Um, and he got that honor last week. He's now a nominee for the actual All-American team. And we'll see how it turns out. It's a it's a very exclusive list. If you start looking through the list, it's kind of a who's who of college football of big time scholar athletes. So really neat honor. Cole is just a sophomore, um, and so we're really excited about another, another couple of years with him. Cole, come on up. I know Cole looks like um, a choir boy. Um, <laughs> he looks like an Under Armour model. Uh, I don't like standing next to Cole. <laughs> Cole and I get our hair cut at the same place. He was actually getting his hair cut immediately after me about a month ago. And, um, and with the same actual, the exact, actual, the exact same hairdresser. And her attitude towards me and her attitude towards him were very different. <laughs> she seemed really excited to see Cole. I don't, uh, but Cole is not is not just that. You know, he's not just a great scholar athlete. He's also uh, uh, what I like to call a pipe hit linebacker, which he's retro now. If he he'll come downhill and he will smack you. Uh, he plays with an edge, although he uh, he's a, one of the most courteous young men we have. And if you had a daughter and, and she brought him home, uh, you'd be giving yourself a high five because he's a ten plus that way. Uh, but he's not afraid of contact, physicality, aggression. Um, he is a true defensive player and an LPD guy. So. Uh, Cole, tell them your story. Uh, hi, everybody. Like Coach said, I'm Cole Peterson. Uh, I'm a sophomore civil engineering student, and I'm from Boulder, Colorado. So uh, Coach Tink and the coaching staff here recruited me when I was a senior in high school. And so I came up on my visit, and uh, this is my only scholarship offer coming out of high school. And I'm really glad that the coaching staff here took a chance on a skinny 185 pound middle linebacker so and every day up here since then has been a blessing and so that's all i really have to say so. cool your mom likes to take pictures oh yeah and uh so do you have this extensive uh, uh portfolio of pictures of your career or does she like to take pictures of everybody else? Oh, she likes to take pictures of everybody. And when I tell you everybody, I mean not even just the kids on our team. She was taking pictures at Mesa, and she sent me the album after the game, and she was taking pictures of Mesa players like, like that far away. So <laughs> I told her she might have to take it easy, but yeah, she, was, <laughs> she just likes to take pictures. Where's your mom from? Uh, my mom's from Estonia. It's this tiny little country in Europe. It's uh, south of Finland. Well, I was talk we sit next to your folks for the home games. And uh, when I was coaching here, we had probably a 10 years of outstanding linebackers. And several of those are in the Hall of Fame. And I want to tell you, and I told your dad, that you're the best linebacker I've seen go through this school in a long, long time. You're a hell of a player, and you're fun to watch, and I can't wait to see what you do the next couple of years. So keep up whatever you're doing, and the people that didn't offer you a scholarship were poor. <laughs> <laughs> you're a hell of a football player, young man. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. How was the transition from outside to inside this year? Um, 
Well, I played uh, inside in high school, so you know I didn't really have to completely relearn the position. So um, I felt pretty comfortable in there, and I think it was also good to get the experience outside, and it definitely helped the transition coming inside this year. You like it that's more physical inside, though, right? <laughs> yeah, and I don't have to cover fast guys men on men anymore. So. <laughs> Okay, that concludes today. Thanks for everybody for coming. Um, don't forget, please, uh, we're off next week. Have a very happy Thanksgiving. I think it's truly my uh, favorite holiday. There's not all the razzle-dazzle of Christmas and buying gifts and stuff. It's just a time to be uh, grateful and thankful uh, for just about everything. So thank you to the Hard Rocker family. You guys are truly a blessing. Um, I appreciate you guys coming. And don't forget, come out and support the girls Thursday night, 5.30. And then make the trek to BH. We'd love to beat or squash some yellow jackets next Tuesday. So have a great day, everybody. Thanks for coming.